Finally, I'm starving. Hello, everybody. Spooky Sand Woman here. Thank you for checking out episode. Oh God, who knows? Oh, uh, seduce me, the Otome. Last episode. Boys are staying with us. Now we're eating food. Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food on the table. I noticed James's eye twitching in irritation, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it. But I did! I merely smiled before I took some food for myself. There was one piece of food that intrigued me and was barely touched by the boys. It looked like green pasta with shrimp over it. What? Huh? What's this? That miss is a shrimp pesto dish. Pastas are my specialty, so I'm positive you'll enjoy it. I love pasta, but I hate pesto and shrimp. <laughs> I twirled some around my fork and tried it, but I could feel my s I could feel my senses open as my taste buds practically melted in delight at the taste. It was creamy and savory, almost impossible to describe. Oh, this is amazing! I'm glad you like it. At least someone here in the room has taste. <laughs> Matthew and Sam glared at James before they continued to eat. I couldn't help but smile at the brotherly quarrel before eating the rest of the pasta on my plate. James seemed to really hold high standards for his brothers, though it wasn't my place to question why. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange eating with just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel like a part of their family as we ate. However, our peace was soon disturbed. Huh? It's my mom. Excuse me. Hello? Hey, honey, how are you? I'm sorry I didn't get to see you off. Hi, Mom. Everything's fine. I'm actually eating dinner right now. Oh, good, good. So there was food there. Well, your father wanted me to call and talk to you about having a house party tomorrow night. Celebrate the new house and all. A house party? Tomorrow night? So soon? Your father and sister. You know how he is with events. I knew exactly what she meant. He didn't like long, relaxing periods between important events. It was slightly messed up. I don't know why I keep doing this. I was expected to act on the drop of a dime from moving immediately the day after a funeral to my grandfather's house to now organizing a party. I know. Well, since I don't exactly have you two here to help me arrange it, I'm going to need some time to prepare things. Oh, that's fine. I mean, who's going to know who I have work, and you know how I know. I have to do it by myself. He won't help. I'm sure it will be amazing, honey. I have faith in you. Thanks, Mom. All right, I gotta go. I love you too. I love you too, Mom. <sighs> Great. How am I gonna do this? Is something wrong? No, everything's perfectly fine, Eric. She has to organize a house party for her parents. What he said. Huh? How did? Right. Mind reading. But, yeah, I gotta do it soon or my parents will be really disappointed. I'll have to stay up and organize everything tonight. Hey, why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. Sam, back off. We'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. That was surprising. I didn't think the boys would offer help right off the bat. I couldn't help but smile. I was actually rather thankful now that I let them stay. Now I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. Feeling a little tired over there, Quincy? Uh. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day. Oh gosh. At least tomorrow's the weekend so I can sleep in. Then it hit me. Wait. Where are you all going to sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Oh, gotcha. Alright, I'm heading to my room to study and sleep. I I guess I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night. I will, and you too. With that, I left the dining room and went to my room. No. What? I wasn't going to do anything. Yes, he was. 
They still don't freaking tell me what he was going to do. Ah! Like, I've romanced Damien, and I've romanced Eric. They, they give no explanation as to why e Eric says that, or what he was going to do. Tell me! Oh, what's the creator of this game? Michaela? Michaela? I want to know. I was going to be like, I demand you to tell me, but that's not cool. I have no right. I'm going to shut up now. As soon as I got into my room, a wave of exhaustion hit me. Why am I so tired all of a sudden? I just woke up from that nap. I dragged myself to my bed and hauled up one of my bags. I opened it and grabbed my economics book, knowing that no matter how tired I was, I had to study at least a page or two before sleeping at last. The, world's, the, bleh, the words on the page scrambled in my mind as I read through them, but after two or three tries, I managed to understand what the page was about. Equations. Ugh. Finally, I decided to change into my pajamas and head to bed. Today had been a long day and I need the, needed the rest. Speaking of pajamas, random story. Uh, my boyfriend, we Skype 24-7, basically. And sometimes he says random stuff, and he said uh, bananas and pajamas. And I'm like, here's a plot twist. Pajamas and bananas. And he's like, what? And it, was just, it was just weird. Don't ask. We're weird. This is basically the foundation of our relationship is being fucking weird. Anyway. <sighs> Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Three days of surprises in a row would kill me. With that thought in my mind, I drifted to sleep, embracing the darkness of slumber. <laughs> you fucking pretty boys think you're all that. Ah! Well, save that to the end of my pistol! <sighs> Sorry. Huh? What's going on? I couldn't move my body. I felt like I was tied up, and I couldn't see anything beyond the darkness that surrounded me. Yeah, I could hear the sounds of a heated argument coming at me from all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it. Let her go. Matthew? Come on, chicken shit. Fight us like a real man. <laughs> like you scare me, Sam. Come on. Why can't I see? Stay away from her, Malix. And what are you gonna do? Nerd boy. Suddenly, I felt myself pulled to one side and arms wrapped around my body protectively. I've got you. Don't worry. Huh? Eric? As I was held in a tight embrace, I felt the world around me once again settle into a low, peaceful hum. The hostility of the dream before had faded into the black as the arms around me rocked me comfortingly. Slowly, though, my eyes fluttered open and I looked up at the person holding me. Damien! I stared into the eyes of Damien. His face was painted with worry and concern, and I knew he must have seen my dream. But why did I dream of Eric holding me, though? You can't control your dreams. Oh, well... I guess you're right. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, what time is it? It's 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I... Uh, well... You can't control your mind reading? No. Not yet, at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Is everything all right? Huh? Yeah, I'm all right. That's good. I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Yes. I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides, we'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Oh, thank you. Well, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? I'm sure some nice food will take your mind off of what you dreamt of. Hell yeah. Food, food, food. I was it was embarrassing to be the damsel in distress once again, but I felt rather happy that James and Damien were concerned for me, despite only ignoring me for a short time. I wasn't sure if it was just courtesy or if they were genuinely concerned. I couldn't exactly read their minds. Alright. Food, food, breakfast food, bacon, eggs. The two <laughs> The two boys led me back to the dining room where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. The smell wafted from the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach growl in need. Oh, breakfast smells good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. 
That feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder instinctively, knowing, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as I closed my eyes, I felt a hand place itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Huh? Morning. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of the hand on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? Un There's no need Oops, to sorry. Yell, Sam. You're yelling too! Don't argue with me! From behind me, Eric appeared and sat beside me, rubbing his temples in obvious annoyance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at me and smirked at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Their dining room's ten times bigger than this room. Well, ain't you just so dang dang special? And wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> Whatever. Soon, James and Damien appeared, hands full of plates that carried bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. They placed the plates down by each seat before seating themselves. Thank you for the breakfast. It looks amazing. It's our pleasure. All of a sudden, my phone began to ring, ushering me to pull it out from my pocket and answer. Hello? Hey, good morning. Guess who's at your door right now? Right on cue, there's a knock from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Suzu and Naomi were here. I'll get it. My heart quickly began to pound in my chest. Matthew was in the lobby, and he'd get to the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed out of the dining room. As I patched through archway... Wait, what? As I passed through the archway between the dining room and lobby, I saw Matthew reach his hand for the brass door handle, causing the world to go into slow motion. Matthew, don't! But before my words could reach his ears, na Math... What? I almost said Nathaniel. Jeez. Matthew had opened the door and revealed the surprised faces of Naomi and Suzu. Hi, sweetie. Come here. Meet my little girl. Go record with me. The world around me stopped as Suzu and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who merely stared back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from warm to freezing in a matter of seconds. my mom. I could not believe this was happening. How was I going to explain this? This week was bad enough already. You want to leave mama? Okay, here you go. Boop. Mama loves you. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sake, someone do something other than stand there. Who are you? Suzu, let me explain. At the door, Matthew. Oh. Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. They're visitors! Then why did one of them open the door? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Um it was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt hopeless. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder and felt intent ten what? I was in temptation. Tension in my body almost fade away. I turn my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Oh, everything seems surreal. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Suzu and Naomi and sat across from their confused gazes. As Naomi and Susu sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing. Thank you. Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meal. Hey, shh. Hey, shh. Make sure you dig in. I looked at Naomi and Susu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their minds for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. So, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? 
Well, you see, uh... Gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Suzu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. That makes sense. It's such a huge house. A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work. So she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, something like that. We're sorry if we made the situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <coughs> That makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Sam, not now. Well, I... I wanted to help out, but at the same time, I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. So I'm going to stay and help around the house. I'm sure. Besides, it is my housewarming party. I should help out too. Want us to help out as well? I think we got it all taken care of. Thanks though, girls. Alright. We'll head on out then so we're not in the way. Sorry guys. I I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Thank you. I led them back to the lobby and walked them through the doors, opening it for them with a thankful smile. They both gave me hugs and walk before walking out to Naomi's car, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I was happy they didn't. W they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them just because they were my best friends. We had the entire day to work. The party was tonight, and we had to do all we could to make everything right. We sat down and talked about what needed to happen before the party started that night. Each guy had been assigned a different part of the party to do, and right after lunch, we began to work. Since everything was taken care of by at least one- Hello. <laughs> you cute. James told me I could assist one of them. The question was, who? Let's go help James with the garden. What are you doing, cutie? Oh, you're adorable. James and I headed out to the garden. It had been years since I had been in the small field. The gazebo was smaller than I remembered, but I had grown since I had last seen it. And I'm gonna end this episode off real quick before I what? Oh, you made baby. No, no belly rubs? Fine. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. Share with your friends if they like cuties. My baby. My little girl. My little baby. My little baby. Mama loves you so much. Hmm. It's like, no, I don't like this. Okay. Here you go. Anyway, thanks. Bye bye. Oh, your little baby, hush.